do, Mr. Dorsey, have um, policies against uh, deep fakes or manipulated media, against COVID-19 misinformation, against um, things that violate civic integrity, but you don't have a standalone climate change misinformation policy. Um, why not? I'd urge you to reconsider that because helping uh, to disseminate climate denialism, in my view, um, further facilitates and accelerates one of the greatest existential threats to our world. Will you commit to taking down that account, Steve Bannon's account? Albert, for the second time in three weeks, you've been called before the Senate committee so my Republican colleagues can beat you up over claims that your platforms are supposedly biased against conservatives. The fact of the matter is that these allegations are completely baseless. In closing, that what we have here is clear evidence of coordination between Twitter, Google, and Facebook. Mr. Zuckerberg knows he has the tools to track this, but he, won't, he either doesn't remember or won't commit to letting us see it. We have evidence of Facebook tracking its own users all across the web. Mr. Zuckerberg won't answer questions about it, can't remember the name, isn't sure if the tool is deployed in this way, and won't commit to giving us basic information. I submit to you that this is both totally unacceptable and totally predictable, because it is exactly what these tech companies have done to the American people and to Congress for years now, which is why it is time we took action against these modern day robber barons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These people want to make sure that they never lose again and that we have one party rule. And we're seeing them do that now as they tighten the noose around the necks of conservatives, Republicans, libertarians, and generally anybody who stands in opposition to them on the social media platforms. Even little guys like me are in their sights. As I found out literally the day after hearings where Democrats were begging Facebook and Twitter to come down even harder on their critics. Broadly referring to anybody in opposition to them as right wing, far right, conspiracy theorists, white supremacists, you get the idea. We're all monsters and fanatics if we stand in opposition to the Democrats and their mass media complex. We're going to talk about all the most recent examples of big tech undermining our freedom of speech, but first just give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer from this episode's sponsor, Noble Gold. If you're anything like me, you're wondering what's going on with these markets. Right now, they're all over the place and nobody knows what's happening. Will they grow or come crashing down? One thing's for sure. Gold has kept people safe for thousands of years through war, national disaster, and financial troubles. That's why Noble Gold is inviting you to get safe with gold this time. They're gifting a solid 24 karat American Gold Eagle coin and a spectacular display case with every qualifying IRA or 401k started before the end of November. No call centers, no sales pitch, straight through to the experts who will give you your options. So go to www www.noblegoldinvestments.com and get this special coin offer. Or you can call 877-646-5347. So this first story comes from Canada, but you could easily see this exact same insanity playing out here in America. The Canadian book publishing company that's putting out Jordan Peterson's new book came under attack by fanatical left-wing extremist Marxists who put on a full-blown theatrical performance hoping that they would convince the publisher to pull their support for Peterson's book. So according to Vice News, these activists who put on this theatrical performance claim that Peterson is an icon of hate speech, transphobia, and the fact that he's an icon of white supremacy regardless of the content of his book I'm not proud to work for a company that publishes him. And this all came from a junior employee, a member of some LGBTQ group that came to this town hall to beg this publisher to essentially censor Jordan Peterson. One of the other employees said that people were crying in the meeting about how Jordan Peterson has affected their lives. I mean, crying? Seriously? I mean, anybody who's, I'm, I'm not a huge Jordan Peterson follower, but I followed him early on, and the guy seems to be a very soft-spoken, reasonable guy. Uh, nothing about this guy seems extremist. Right not to be offended. Right not to be offended. <laughs> right not because to be offended. In order right to be able that? to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. Boom! You know, like, you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. <laughs> and 
I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> Next, we have Twitter announcing these new plans to make 1984 a reality by adding warnings for users who like controversial tweets. Controversial. Of course, these controversial tweets are only ever controversial to left-wingers. If somebody from the right has any sort of a problem with a comment coming from the left that they see as controversial, those will not be censored in the same way using the same standards. We're all just a bunch of unwashed plebs to be swept aside and ignored. Twitter support announced this tweet by saying, quote, giving context on why a label tweet is misleading under our election, COVID-19 and synthetic and manipulated media rules is vital. These prompts help decrease quote tweets of misleading information by 29%. So we're expanding them to show what you tap to like a labeled tweet. So essentially, if you like a tweet that Twitter and the left have deemed controversial, a warning label will pop up and say that, oh, this is a disputed tweet like you're seeing right here. As we're all well aware of, there's plenty of plenty of misleading information swirling around out there that's coming from our supposed mainstream media and we all know that these outlets will never be targeted for this censorship. This is simply another vague, plausible deniability tactic to hide inconvenient information to the Democrat Party. And if you think I'm crazy, I, you know, they probably label me a conspiracy theorist for saying this. YouTube may do that very thing. Here is actually a great example from today of what I'm talking about. CNN just tweeted this a few hours ago, saying that Trump referenced the Proud Boys as he refused to condemn white supremacists this fall. He has not refused to condemn white supremacists. As we have talked about on this channel and many other channels have talked about, Trump has actually condemned white supremacists over 20 times just since 2016 alone. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. I spoke out forcefully against hatred, bigotry, and violence and strongly condemned the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, and the KKK. President Donald Trump signed a congressional joint resolution that condemns white supremacy, neo-Nazis, and other hate groups. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. Any group of hate, I don't like it. Any group of hate, I am, whether it's white supremacy, whether it's any other kind of supremacy, whether it's Antifa, whether it's any group of hate, I am very concerned about it. We know this is a lie. You just saw it. Yet no warnings, no censorship. Moving right along. Uh, <laughs> here on YouTube, they are targeting rising star Candace Owens, which isn't surprising. The left, the media, all these institutions always focus in on whoever the most prominent conservative right-leaning voice is and then attempt to destroy them. Now they're targeting Candace Owens and they're doing so by deleting several of her podcast episodes. So YouTube is attacking democracy, in my opinion, and science by censoring one of her long-form discussions with an author. Uh, she's from the Wall Street Journal, Abigail Schreier. And she wrote a book about the irreversible dangers of transitioning young people and teenagers with gender dysphoria. So I have not read her book, but apparently it's not anti-trans at all. It never comes out against being a transgender person, but rather it's a medical discussion about the long-term effects of what she calls serious medical interventions, basically saying that doing these things to young kids and teenagers has long-lasting effects that are not necessarily good. YouTube sees any discussion of facts or reality that are inconvenient to their ideological agenda as hate speech, which as we know is a broad, undefined term that again serves as essentially plausible deniability for the censorship of views and facts that they find inconvenient. Lastly, I want to talk about YouTube now also taking action against OANN or the One America News Network, demonetizing their channel and suspending them from uploading content. And they're also not allowed to live stream. Um, this is all based on alleged disinformation in one of their videos that was actually unlisted on their channel. It wasn't available to the public. So things are moving very swiftly. The media is laying the groundwork right now to sweep away all opposition and dissent. 
You can support me in my mission of exposing these people by using one of the links in the description or pinned comment. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all next video.